Hi, ladies. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so excited to get to share some things today and hopefully encourage you, lift you up, make everything seem a little bit better for you. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is set a bit of an agenda. But before I do that, I want to wish you my deepest condolences. Being a widow and losing your husband and your life mate is not something I would wish on anybody, not my worst enemy. It's not easy, but I'm so proud of you for being here. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to set the agenda, plan to relax, take notes, and be encouraged. I've got my ice water. I hope you have water or tea or something that soothes your tummy and makes you feel good. I'm going to share a little bit about me and my story, but more importantly, I'm going to share with you the five steps I used to, as a widow, break out of anxiety and self-doubt into vitality and the life that I'm living today. So we have a webinar. Sit tight for it. Um, just relax. We're going to spend about 45 minutes to about an hour today. So hopefully you have that time set aside. Turn your phone off and enjoy. Okay, let's get going. So, I've turned off my video so you guys can focus on the webinar. So my five simple steps for widows. The reason I created Renegade Widow was simply because as hard as I tried, I did not, nothing helped. My previous world was gone. I was a stranger to who I was. And it, it was stressful with an inordinate amount of loss in my immediate family from the time I was a teenager. I've learned a lot about grief and a lot about forgiving and forwarding, going forward, excuse me. The problem with forging on is we don't take time that we need to process the grief. We end up stuck and that is not a good place. Thankfully, but regrettably, I had no choice but to take complete and utter care of me after my husband passed. As a certified coach, I specialize in helping widows feel empowered to embrace a new way of life and to achieve their personal dreams and goals. My name is Terri Ann Muller, and from the time I was 15 years old, my losses have been numerous. The pain was so deep. I'm passionate about helping others to manage their grief while stepping into their own confident, independent life. I'm here to walk you towards your new self-confident self. My experience comes from a lifelong series of close family lost. I lost my sister when I was 15 years old and my brother when I was 29, and it was both tragically um, unexpected. So I've spent years in spite of these tragedies working on my personal development, learning as much as I could to become strong and to manage all of the sour sorrow, excuse me, that me and my family have endured. It was painful and my mom and dad didn't really have um, any type of roadmap on how to deal with their grief. So let's dive in, take a nice deep breath, exhale and relax. This time is for you. Enjoy and know that you're in good hands. My heart is so tender for women that are open and motivated to finding their new purpose. I'm here to help you move from fear to hope and enjoy your life with purpose and passion. Get off the emotional roller coaster so you can feel confident in making decisions. And if you have a need for new relationships like I did, attract loving, supportive relationships to feel good about the people you allow in your life. Believe in yourself. You've got this, girl. I recognize some of you from my group, and thank you so much for coming on today and giving me the support. Thank you so much. So why you're here? You've been through hell, is my guess, and your life has changed in a big way. Your current self is craving vibrancy and joy, and you lack the energy or clarity to get going, and you miss your former self. As a new widow, I spent many days that turned into months laying on the couch. My appetite was sadly lacking, and all I could do was eat food that comforted me. My daughter and I spent a lot of time at our favorite Mexican restaurant when we drug ourselves off the couch. So I started to realize I had to make some change. I just don't know where to start. But the good news is you're not alone. Thank you so much again for being here today. And together, we're going to walk through the five steps to help you renew your passions, 
redesign yourself into the vibrant woman you know you can be. Pat yourself on the back for showing up today and say out loud right now in your house, wherever you're at, this hope is for me. You took vital time out of your day just for you. I want to pat you on the back too. Good job. So I can help you reclaim balance and peace in your life. Sounds like a big order, doesn't it? But together, we can get your old happy self back and also redesign who you want to be. This might be the first time you've ever been able to focus solely on yourself and not a moment too soon, right? I'm not here to sell you anything, but if you stay until the end of this webinar, I have a very special gift just for you. We have some fun things coming. So Renegade Widow is for women who have endured the devastation of losing their husband, but they're also open and committed to recover, reclaim, and redesign their life. And I say the word committed with heavy emphasis. It does take commitment and motivation, but you can do it. If I could, if I could, anybody can. And you're in the right place. If you're ready for deep healing, amazing personal growth and transformation, you desire to be happy again and to feel excited when you start your day and to develop new relationships. Just give it time. That coin phrase has always been so off-putting to me. But in the, inter the interesting thing is, it's true. It doesn't change the fact that we miss our husbands, not at all. But the truth is when we give the loss, it's due with grief and all of the attention we need to give it. That is what prepares us and helps us to be ready to find a new healthy life and step into new beginnings. This life has no place for guilt and shame. This is the new life. It comes with permission to keep looking forward and to be happy. Does this sound like something that is familiar to you? Are you having a hard time cooking for one? Or even harder, you have to cook for your kids and they need you to cook for them. You don't have a choice. Are you disappointed when you hear the old gang gets together but you never got the invite? Yep, me too. Totally normal. I hear it all the time. It still sucks. Nothing about that makes you feel good. There's so many consistencies in widowhood. It really is remarkable. And while they all hurt, it does help to know that we're not alone. Turning to bad habits, such as drinking too much or taking recreational drugs or even prescription drugs uh, irresponsibly, it, it, it doesn't soothe your nerves. It just adds more trouble and causes additional issues. Are you experiencing stress and anxiety over making the smallest decisions? Boy, when I had to clean out my husband's garage with all of his tools and all of his personal belongings, it took me over a year to even start. I was so overwhelmed. I don't know if that sounds familiar to you, but mm -hmm. what I can tell you is life is hard enough. You add widowhood into that mix and life gets real really fast. You know all too well how short life can be and not everybody can be receptive to working on their fear and anxiety, but there are certainly people who are aware and ready. If you're sleeping poorly and you feel tired most of the time, how can we feel confident about anything? At night when I would fall into bed exhausted, absolutely so excited to finally get to go to bed, I was instantly wide awake. It is this, as if a disco went off inside of me. It went on like this night after night. And I know I'm not the only one. I hear it from my clients. So do you want to move forward with a new and intentional life? Exert your power of choice over whatever life may throw at you? Claim renew, re, excuse me, reclaim, renew, and redesign, easy for me to say, your new world. So what does that mean to be intentional? It's when you make a conscious effort to be present and calm in your day. You find new ways to exert your strength and begin to redesign your world exactly how you want it. I used to think I was too old to go out and have fun. I mean, real fun. But I realized age is just a number. I don't care if you're 25 or 75. We all crave fun. We all crave to have belly laughs and it's so darn good for us. So my clients find comfort in knowing that they're not alone and that there is hope in learning the method I use to move from anxiety to vitality. It wasn't as easy as I said before. 
my life has been one tragedy after another. It was a bumpy road, but thankfully I didn't give up. I was determined to find my happy place even with new tragedy and hardship that continued to occur. And that's how I was able to regain my balance and some peace in my life and more importantly, hope. I always say that if we don't have hope, we don't have anything. And so if there's one glimmer of hope in your life, focus on that and build off of it from there. When you own your part, you will not only gain a sense of control, feel connected to your true self, you'll enhance your awareness of how you can take charge of your life. Doesn't that sound awesome? You become acquainted with your personal boundaries and enjoy authentic relationships. I was able to shut off quite a few people that really weren't that good for me. And I, now I have good authentic friendships and better relationships with my family members than I ever have. When you learn to be centered and connected with yourself, it will serve you and, and those that you love more than you could ever dream of. You, excuse me, you gain clarity about what needs to happen next. You love your new energy and joy. When you make yourself a priority, people will start to notice that you've made some kind of a shift and be happy for you. And frankly, the ones that are not happy will not hold the control over you that they once did. You intentionally indulge in what expands and energizes you. You begin to recognize what makes you feel good and what drains you. Your, your happiness increases and you look and feel better. I had somebody tell me that after about a year, when I started taking care of myself, that I looked like a different person. My soul was beginning to rejuvenate. And one last thing on this, I want you to remember that people only have the power over you that you can give them. They can't. They can't have power over you unless you give consent. So who this isn't for, this may not be ideal for you if you're looking for something or someone to magically fix you. There's no magic fairy dust. If you're not actually, excuse me, action oriented and are not open to the idea of change as possible and you're not ready for change, this is definitely not the right time for you. If, here's what I found, that if I stay on the fence too long, You'll always choose your comfort zone over expansion into, who, into what seems scary, but so exciting, so wealth the time and effort. So a little bit about me. My first year, year as a widow, I felt enormously vulnerable. That first year I suffered with all over body pain and was exhausted all of the time. I was a ghost of my former self. I didn't know how to say no to my kids other family members, and even friends. It felt empty and alone. I, the anxiety was my constant companion. But now, fast forward six years after my husband's death, I realized how much support I didn't have during his illness and following his death. And yet here I am enjoying my life, having a vibrant relationships and experiencing joy every day. My mind and body were wrecked from the trauma of being a primary caregiver of a cancer patient and along with all of its ugliness. But then, after about a year, I began to have renewed interest in the desire to live again. I knew I had to do something before my life passed me by. I had an urgency to recover and move past all of the sadness. I was desperate for some normalcy but didn't know how to get there. So why am I a coach? If you've ever tried to overcome a particular challenge but found you didn't have the ability to go it alone or ever felt like you were just completely in overwhelm, I know exactly how that feels. I used to feel that same way. In fact, we might have more in common than you think. As time goes by, you'll see so many similarities that only widows share. I always say it's like being part of a private club that you didn't want to join. But here you are, and so you make the best of it. So my transformation roadmap. What inspired this program is the marvelous transformation I experienced, inspired and about to share with you. When I was a child, I didn't dream about being a nurse or a teacher or a doctor and I didn't wanna be an astronaut. All I knew is I wanted to be a difference maker to help others be, do and have more. And that's exactly why I'm so honored and grateful to get to work with you ladies my own transformation was so profound I couldn't keep, my, keep it to myself. 
It didn't happen overnight though. It took a lot of lumps to get where I am today. Long-term suffering is optional. So let that sink in. Ladies, if you have only one takeaway today, write this down, long-term suffering is optional. I learned I could make an intentional choice to choose new beginnings, and you can too. I enjoy a full life filled with dreams and goals and I'm constantly working on and achieving. It's so much fun. After this webinar, you'll walk away with some action steps that help you to start to recover, reclaim, and redesign your life to feel joy and confidence. Does that sound like something that you'd like to have? So sit tight, keep an open mind, stay until the end. I promise there's a lot of good information that you can use immediately and also stay until the end for that very special gift. So step number one, set your boundaries. Hmm. That was a tough one for me. I had no boundaries. I was wounded and tired, and I was a former shell of myself. When you set limits, protect your self-esteem, maintain your self-respect, enjoy healthy relationships. Boundaries sound pretty sexy, don't they? Conversely, lacking boundaries can lead to a lot of things that are not good for you. Without boundaries, structure, or structure in your life, you're full of self-doubt. In that state, we tend to eat poorly using food for our only comfort or worse. I mentioned my favorite Mexican spot. I'm not kidding. For me, that meant packing on 35 pounds, and that sure didn't help matters at all. I was miserable in my skin. The emotional pain and poor confidence, my life felt like I was in chaos. My soul felt completely defeated and I continued on with my poor eating and drinking habits. And when I say drinking, there were times I would drink maybe a little too much wine. Not good. It never made me feel better. Thankfully, that's not something I deal with today. By the way, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm saying keep it in control, that wine situation. So setting boundaries is essential to being emotionally healthy when we feel this new hope, it becomes our new obsession. Feeling good and happy and having hope is intoxicating in a healthy way. We feel empowered and we are able to open up space to allow joy in our lives. We hope helps us to feel vibrant and whole again. Finding pleasure in the small moments such as a butterfly or a hummingbird, a puffy cloud that looks like a dinosaur, silly things are good things. Be happy, make the choice. Here's what we know. You cannot be all things or do all things for all people. If we don't care, take care of ourselves, we cannot be any good for the ones we love. So we have to put ourselves first. So how do you take charge? How do you know what boundaries to set? And for the love of Pete, how do you keep them? So my good friend Becky said to me one time, Terry Ann, you're really good at setting boundaries, but you're horrible at keeping them. And I mean, in that moment, it was so pivotal for me. And it can be for you too. It's just having awareness of what you can do. So not only was I hurting myself, I was hurting others by allowing them to behave in an unhealthy way. So it starts with small, simple actions. It's not anything you know, earth shattering or anything that to be stressed out about, small, simple actions such as practicing self-awareness. Learn to respect yourself and that will convey to your friends and your family and coworkers that they have to respect you too. It's okay to be direct and honest. You can do that without yelling or cussing or screaming or losing your cool. You'd be very calm and in control and you just be direct and honest and say, this isn't working for me. You'll be able to determine what you're willing to tolerate. When you're clear in your mind, you'll know what to allow in your life and what's harmful for you. You also, I love this, you'll begin to feel empowered and love yourself as you master this art. You didn't get this way overnight, and so just give yourself grace. It will come. I was amazed. I mean amazed when my life began to shift into a state of joy it had been so long, my journey had been so arduous, and even with the additional tragedy and more hard knocks, I refused to let the newfound joy 
go. And I was frankly, felt like I was in power. I had finally taken charge of my life. Once I got a taste of it, I wasn't going to give it up. I kept my eye on the prize of a fulfilling life. It doesn't mean we're immune to har the hardballs that life throws at us. It does mean though, that we can be stronger and navigate life just a little bit better or just a lot. Step number two, moving right along. I mentioned it earlier about giving yourself grace. These are times when we see peaks of hope and then without any warning, we have a bad day or a bad week or bad moment. The fact of our loss absolutely never goes away. What I want to teach each of you is how to give the sadness or other feelings its space, take the time to unpack it from a place of strength and not of sheer fear. You will be so glad you did. So why is this important? Why is, what, what is grace? What is it so important for? Here's what we know. Time marches on whether we're miserable or whether we're happy. When you give yourself grace, you make room for expansion into the new happy life you want. You've been through the worst part of grief. Allow yourself to honor your emotions. You can find ways to keep moving forward. Feel for a time, let's say an hour or a day or whatever you feel you need, and then you can pick back up and keep moving forward. That's giving yourself grace. That's giving yourself permission to fall apart if you need to. But then you say, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to feel better and I'll be healthier for it. But I'm only going to do it for a time. I need to let this out, but I also need to keep moving forward. Prolonged unhappiness is not good for anybody. By giving yourself grace, you can ignite a small smoldering fire of hope that grows exponentially in your life. Now, on the other hand, when we don't give ourselves grace, that's when we feel anxiety, pressure, and guilt for what we're doing and for what we're not doing. So just last week, I had some pretty deep anxiety over its head. Yep, it still happens, and I was trying to bury it and not face it. I didn't have time for it. So I wasn't working with it in the healthy way that I know works. Then all of a sudden a light bulb popped on. I realized what I was doing and I decided to give it the space I needed. I took some time to just back away from my work and from my day to see what I actually had control over. And in pretty short order, I was able to move on in my day, feel more calm and centered. It's when we leave matters unaddressed that the endless chatter wears us down. I had to give myself grace when I relapsed into that bad habit. What I'd like to tell each of you, or a good girlfriend, it's okay to start fresh. Just pick up from tomorrow's another day, as my grandson Abel says. Grace is when you tell yourself it's okay to have a bad day, and it's also okay to be happy. Widows are notorious for feeling guilty when they laugh or when they realize they're having fun. They'll stop right in their tracks of fun and, and, and say, oh, this doesn't feel good. My husband wouldn't like this. But that's, you know, deep down inside, that's not true. Just know okay and internalize it's okay to be great. So positive self-talk. There's such power in the spoken words. Think about how you talk to yourself. Saying simple words to manifest a better mindset is super effective. Even if you don't believe it, at first, do it anyway. Say it out loud. Say them anytime you need to, to bolster yourself up. You'll begin to believe it, and you will be amazed at the difference you feel immediately. If I find myself starting to have a bad day or I'm feeling down and it's not over one particular thing, I stand up and I claim my power and I say, I am going to have a great day. It takes practice, but in a fun way. Be mindful of your words. It's power. I'm able to work through any situation. I'm a good, I'm, excuse me, I'm in a good place to start anew. Today, I am a badass and it's okay to try again. I'm a good communicator. If you have a fight with one of your coworkers or one of your family members, your kid, don't beat yourself up. Just say, okay, I'm a good communicator and I'm gonna be able to handle this better the next time. And I sure as heck deserve to be treated well. Those are all good, 
positive self-talk affirmations. Most of all, out of anything else that you learn, believe in yourself. So many of us feel completely alone and scared in early widowhood. Actually, I think every widow I've ever spoken to says that. One gal said, I used to never be afraid of anything, but now that my husband's gone, I'm afraid of everything. And it's so true. We do have the ability to believe in ourselves and to choose hope over defeat. It does take time for your mind shift, but never ever stop believing in yourself. Step number three, moving right along. Learn to prioritize yourself. Nurture yourself into better physical and mental and spiritual health to boost your confidence. This is when we really begin to find our power in our actions, thoughts, and words. When you make yourself a priority, you learn to increase clarity, mindfulness about what you desire to make better and confident decisions so you can feel good about where you're going. It's overused, but it gets the point across. There is a reason that a flight attendant tells us in their safety talk to put on their air mask first, put on your air mask first before we try to help others. If we're operating from a place of defeat, we're no good to anyone, not to mention ourselves, our family, work, anything. Friends, we have to take care of ourselves first. So ignoring your personal needs will further diminish your mind, body, and soul. When we feel depleted for long periods of time, it's hard to find hope or joy. And when we're run down, it's hard to keep going or have the desire to live. We begin to accept that life is going to suck from then on. I've heard that so many times, I can't tell you. But that's no good. It's no bueno. It's so unhealthy to go on this way, beat down in every aspect of your existence. It compromises our appetite. We either binge eat or don't eat at all. We don't sleep well. Basically keeps you stuck and increases your anxiety. On the other hand, a positive mindset will increase your energy for joy and for a happier life. Baby steps is all it takes to get started on a more positive journey. I was so pleasantly surprised when my life started to shift so effortlessly. I felt better and looked better and I had more confidence than I had in a very, very long time. Helps you to keep your healthy boundaries. People begin to recognize how they can and cannot treat you and what is acceptable in your life. It'll move you into a place of expansion and vibrancy and it becomes so attractive. Other people want to follow you. You'll feel motivated to try new activities and make new friends. So what I know is learning to speak love and light into your day makes all the difference. If you feel down, angry, or have anxiety, take a quick minute and say out loud, standing up, arms in the air, I am strong, smart, beautiful, and kind, and I will have a good day. And I'm going to tell you guys a little secret. I had to do that today because I've had the flu or something, some kind of stomach bug for the last three days. But here I am, and I am having a good day. I love this. I'm so happy you're here. So what do you think about putting affirmations around your house and in your car? Put some on your desk or on the fridge, in the bathroom mirror when you wake up in the morning to brush your teeth. I cannot emphasize enough how powerful this is. It really is what creates, begins to create a mind shift. It's such an easy thing to do. As your mind and body and spirit become stronger, your confidence rises, you begin to have more energy, you feel happier, and you actually gain a much missed sense of, sense of control. This is where the magic starts to happen, ladies. And again, it's where we feel super motivated to keep going in the right direction, where we sign up for the 5K like I did. I'll never forget it. I had been working on myself for a while. And one night I was sitting at home and I decided, you know what, I'm going to run a 5k. And I talked my girlfriend into it and we signed up for the neon run. It was at night and it was really fun. I met some new friends. I got in better shape. I started taking a few pounds off. I felt so darn good about myself. 
When you feel in control of your life and emotions, everything is better. So this is a little bit, it's actually a testimony from Ellie. When I started working with Ellie, I was able to help her find some small positives in her life. She was having a hard time with her adult kids trying to run her life. She didn't feel confident in making her own decisions, but with encouragement and small changes each day, she began to have more confidence. She was able to set boundaries with her kids, with her friends, with herself. She set some goals and even went to Europe with a new friend she had met on a social event. <laughs> You're probably wondering if it was a man, aren't you? Stay till the end and I'll, I'll let you know. So step number four, excuse me while I take a drink of water. Mm. And you should too. Practice self-awareness. You're going to learn to be more mindful, more in tune with how you feel long before the meltdown or the fight or whatever blindsides you before you know what hits you. It's a wonderful tool to have in your tool belt. So what is self-awareness? You begin to recognize and honor your feelings to reduce mood swings. So I use those two words, recognize and honor. A lot of times we recognize when something doesn't make us feel good, but we don't do anything about it. It's, it's when we begin to honor your feelings and reduce your mood swings that, that you be, really begin to take notice and be self-aware. You pay attention to your boundaries to create peace and harmony in your life. And when you're centered, you enjoy the feeling of level thinking, contentment, and confidence. Who here doesn't want that? You also notice when you're not giving yourself grace, when you're beating yourself up, and you fall back into second guessing yourself. So learn to start eliminating that a little bit at a time, ever so slightly, and then over time, you just get so much better at it. So here's a question, ask yourself, if I keep living my life the way I am right now, Will I be okay? What if I don't change? Or what if I do? What would happen? Take a pad and paper and spend just a few minutes today. Jot down two or three things you, you would absolutely love to do if you were brave instead of afraid. What if you could start towards those things right now? I feel like you've made a good start. Ask yourself, is it okay to change for the better? And how does that feel to you? Put yourself first and enjoy healthy relationships. Oh, doesn't that sound good? Have a happier life. Attract better people and things in your life. When I became a widow, the majority of my so-called friends fell away. And you know what? It hurt. But now I see that it truly was in my best interest and my overall well-being. I, I love it. You'll know soon enough who your true friends are and it's never too late to meet new people. I'm in my 50s, so I thought, geez, it's gonna be so hard to find new friends. But the good news is, it's not hard if you put yourself out there and you get to be a little pickier. So you get to spend time with people that make you feel good to be with them. Talk about empowerment, that is your choice. Decision-making easier becomes easier and you get clear on where you wanna go in life. So what I would encourage you to do today, ladies, is decide where you want to be in a year from now, five years from now, and how you want to spend out the rest of your life, and then get started. When something doesn't feel right, ask yourself, okay, what's changed? Things are going good. What's changed now? What is the situation eliciting that makes me feel resentful or stressed? Go back to the question, what do I have control over? It's hard to realize we can only control one person, and that is ourselves. Number one, that's it. Not one other person, period. When you accept that, you have no control over anyone, unless you have young kids. Of course, you have to parent them. Other than that, anyone else, you don't have to control. It frees you up to take care of you. So hop off the insanity train. Know your limits, become familiar and more self-aware and you'll know how to move away from filling a situation. 
go back to giving yourself grace. Don't beat yourself up when you relapse into a bad habit or something happens. Gently lead yourself back to your secure, mindful self. Pay attention to how you spend your time. It does energize and, it gives, and give yourself grace. I'm having a little um, technical difficulty. Give me just a second. Okay. All right. So, oh, good. Step number five, my very favorite step. I love this. Find your joy. You can do it. I, I promise you'll start to notice things differently today. Joy is one of the gifts that we get to delight in every single day. Drop into your heart space and enjoy your day. There's so many moments that if you just give yourself the chance, look at a beautiful butterfly or a hummingbird and take notice of it. Watch them land on a plant and look at the vibrant green it is. Just begin to notice the small things and that'll help you again to drop into your heart space. Ladies, you all have been on a really hard road. I don't want this time to be for nothing. I didn't want my time to be for nothing. You're, if you're able to turn your time of grief and sadness into one of transformation, that is where we begin to accept what our future is. It's easy to get caught up in wearing our grief like a badge, but it doesn't have to be the end of your story. It's so good to be hopeful. So the big change, don't let that scare you. What if you choose not to struggle, live in fear or feel stuck the rest of your life? How does that sound to you? How does that feel to you? We really do only have two choices. We can be stuck or we can keep moving. Unfortunately, many widows choose that stuck path. Uncertainty feels more comfortable than taking charge and moving forward. Find your bliss. Ooh, I love it. What lights you up? What gives you that little race in your heart in a good way? Spend some time today writing down 10 things that you've always wanted to do, but for one reason or another, you haven't. We'll each know all too well in short, we all know bleh, too well how short life really is. Be the one that says, I'm glad I did and not I wish I had. I know that's why I'm a yes person. If somebody comes to me and says, hey, let's go on a motorcycle ride. You know what my answer is? Yes. Hey, let's do yoga. Yes. Hey, let's hike. Yes. Hey, let's go to the beach. Absolutely. I don't want to be the no person. I don't want to be the one turning down invitations. I want to be the one having fun. And I hope you guys come with me. So finding bliss when you're in the moment is so apparent. You'll learn how to center yourself and be present, not to think too far into the future. And most importantly, you'll be intentional in your actions. You'll enjoy yourself, but over time with practice, you'll master this art of being present. Of course, always plan for your future in a healthy way. But when fear and doubt try to keep in, tackle it head on and figure out what's going on to cause your unease. It's something. And if you look at it intentionally, you'll figure it out. It's important to set goals and planning for the future. Just do it with intention. Mm. You will love your newfound energy and renewed hope. This new way of thinking will become your new crush. Be happy for you. Become your primary focus. It will help everything else fall into place. Hmm. So the vitality blueprint, as I like to call it, this is what we just covered. So we learned how to set boundaries. First of all, we have to identify them. What makes us feel good? What doesn't make us feel good? How is somebody treating me? Is that normal? Start to recognize those things. You'll know how to set your boundaries in quick order. And if you don't, I can recommend some books for you. Give yourself grace. When you've relapsed or you do something that doesn't make you feel good, it's not your proudest moment, 
Tell yourself it's okay. I'm going to start fresh today. And learn to love yourself. Take yourself on a little shopping spree. I buy my dresses at Ross. They're $21. Throw a pair of heels on with it and I feel like a million bucks. I don't have to go and spend a bunch of money. I love to go get a mani-pedi, maybe get a massage once in a while. But those are the things that, that's just loving yourself. That's called self-care. Practice self-awareness. Just be aware of how you're acting, how things make you feel, how somebody else is acting, and how, you know, how to control it. Going back to boundaries. You go back to your boundary setting. It's just kind of a whole little cycle that you'll learn very quickly. And again, find your joy. Be happy. Go with friends and have some fun. Go to the art show. My friend drug me, and I do mean drug me, to an art show. I didn't want to go after my husband died. That's the, one of those times I was laying on the couch and didn't want to do anything. And so we went to the art show, and I recognized this, this artist's work. And I said, I love these. I love your art. They're in my doctor's office. And she said, oh, yeah, Sherry is my cousin. I said, oh, it's so awesome. Do you give art lessons? Because I knew I always wanted to take painting lessons, and I knew I had a little bit of a gift, but I never really took the time for myself to manifest it and to practice and see what I had. She said, well, I don't, but I will. And so it took me a little time. It was too soon. And plus, she was moving from an, um, back from another state. And so about a year after that, we connected, and I took painting lessons from her, and I absolutely love it. I'm telling you, ladies, I can paint for three, four, five, six hours and never blink. I stop to get more water and go to the bathroom. That's it. So that's my joy. That's one of many. I think that you guys can find some stuff like that too. So you have some choices. You can stay on the roller coaster, endure sleepless nights, listen to mindless chatter, and fight anxiety, or you can implement the five steps that I've just taught you all on your own, make some positive changes, and hopefully make them stick. The last choice is you can work with me and I'll help you design a roadmap to live the life of your dreams. And again, I'm not selling you anything today. What I will tell you is that at this point, I hope you've been inspired, that you have some new tools in your tool belt, and here's what I do know. I can help you. You'll be able to face the unknown and empower you to mindfully steer yourself in a new direction. You can make a difference in your life and you deserve it. So please own that. Please know that. Move from feeling stuck and scared to reclaiming and renewing and redesigning your joy. So Lori wanted to find herself again, kind of like I was just talking about. She wanted to stop feeling guilty about wanting to be happy again. She was determined to work through all of her issues to find a new life so that she could feel secure as an independent woman. She was fully committed to working on herself for the first time in her life, and it's made a huge difference for her kids, for work, for making new friends. She is living her authentic life. And we had so much fun getting to know each other and spending time together. So if you remember, at the start of our time together, I told you if you stayed until the end, I have a very special gift for you. I'm opening up my calendar to offer you a free 50-minute breakthrough call to help you implement the steps that we covered here. You're probably wondering why I would spend all this time doing this. Remember, also when I said I wanted to be a difference maker, this is rewarding and I get to do my worst life and I love it. It's absolutely what gets me out of bed every single day with fire and passion and anticipation. So what we'll do when we're on the call, we'll walk you through how you can apply the five steps. We'll talk a little bit about your story and see how we can get you started in the right direction. So here's how you schedule your call. You go to renegadewidow.com and you click on schedule call along the top of the toolbar. It's real easy. 
And because you're so important to me and making a difference is my mission, it also means I have limited slots. So get on there today and get that call booked. Here's who should, who should set, schedule a call. If you feel uncertain and fearful about the future, but you want this, to, this time to be a grand turning point in your life, if you need a compassionate guide who can relate to you on so many levels, you know this painful time has the potential to make you or break you. We only have two choices, lady, ladies, <laughs> excuse me. You can either let it make you and help you to build character and to be stronger, or you can let it break you. And I don't say this lightly. I know life keeps kicking us in the butt. I, I said so many times throughout our time together, I had that too. But it's interesting how when our mindset changes, for the better, it dictates how we see ourselves and how our life and those around us are seen. So make a decision. Now, on the other hand, here's what I'll say, and I hope this is not any of you, and if it's okay, if it is, it's okay. If this is call is not for you, if you're stuck in denial with no desire to move forward, maybe you're just not ready, or maybe you're never gonna be ready. I hope, again, that that's not you. If you're struggling with moderate or severe depression or substance abuse, whether it's alcohol or illegal drugs or street drugs, I guess, or even prescription drugs, this call's not for you. I'm not a doctor, I'm a coach. If you need a doctor, go first, go do it. You are the priority and you need to do what is best for you when you need to do it. Don't put it off. Also, if you're not willing to give your all to deeply healing your wounded spirit and creating a new life. So the breakthrough call, we'll talk about, as I said, your situation. We're gonna find ways to apply the five steps to your life. We'll talk about renegade widow and if it's a good fit for you and we'll decide together if we can begin right away. If it's not a good fit, my promise to you is that I will give you 100% my best effort to help you start on the steps we talked about while we're on our free 50-minute call. If you decide you want to keep going it on your own, it's absolutely okay. I don't ever want you to do something that doesn't feel good or serve you. Here's what I will tell you too. Don't look at the big picture of, if you're sitting on your couch today eating sunflower seeds and drinking diet Pepsi, don't say, how will I ever be like her? How will I ever get my act together? You don't have to have it all figured out to move forward. Just take the next step. Taking the first step is always the hardest, but it is the only way, absolutely only way to get to the next step. So will you call? Do you want to get help? get the most out of your new life? I can give you the tools to achieve balance and fulfilling life cycle. I'll help support you with compassion and wisdom, laughter and encouragement, and very possibly some tears. My mission is to move you forward, keep the past in a healthy place with honor, but not consuming you, just like I did. Lao Tzu said, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Doesn't that look lovely? I want to go there today. <laughs> but anyway, just learn to be brave. We can believe for hope or not. There's really no gray area. It's either one or the other. So here's something I wanted to share with you. We're offering this special fast action bonus we take this very seriously because we find our best success stories come from action takers, let's do this kind of women. I've always been a firefighter kind of vain girl. Not too long after Mark passed away, I called the hospice we used. And one of my best friends, I mentioned her earlier, Becky was the executive director at that time. And we still laugh about what they said today. When I called, I said, okay, what's the top three things I can do right now to get over this and feel better? Of course, we all know that it doesn't work that way. 
But as soon as I could, I went to work to recover, reclaim, and redesign my life. So if you sign up in the first 24 hours for my special second gift, I'm excited for you. So if you're ready to move forward, schedule your breakthrough call right now. There are slots right on my calendar. Go to www.renegadewidow.com. You can type it in the way you see it here, or you can just click on the top bar, schedule a call. You'll also be invited to join our Facebook group, which is filled with women that get you. And who doesn't need that? If you're not a widow, you don't get us. Doesn't mean our friends don't love us. They just don't get the level of where we've been. Our Facebook group is a judgment-free zone, and it's called Renegade Widow Group. As I said, I saw many of my ladies on here, and I'm so glad you came out today for this. What it is, is an intimate community of women that build incredible relationships. The fast action bonuses do go away. Be a hell's yeah woman. Let's go. One last thing. I have one more super special gift for you. When you book your free call again in the next 24 hours, I'm not going to tell you what it is until you book. And one last thing about Ellie that went to Europe with a friend that she met. It was such a nice man that she met, and they're so happy. So there's that little piece. Thank you for staying to the end. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for spending this time with me. I hope, so hope I see you on the other side. Have a blessed day, ladies.